President Trump's war on big tech is getting even dumber. That's the thesis and title of our next guest's latest article. AEI fellow and CNBC contributor James Pethokoukis joins us now from Washington. What do you mean, Jimmy? Well, listen, uh, the president is now aiding and abetting this sort of, uh, you know, Republican conspiracy theory that the big uh, tech companies, particularly Google and Facebook, uh, also Twitter, are trying to suppress conservative thought by kicking people out, by sort of de-emphasizing their posts. Uh, so he's been tweeting about it. And, I've, and now next week, there's going to be a social media summit at the White House where the president is going to bring a bunch of conservative bloggers and stuff to complain about big tech and probably argue that they need to be broken up, regulated, or stripped of their Section 230 immunity uh, against liability for think, user posts. Do you not think it's a, it's a problem and it's an issue worth exploring just how much free speech is too much free speech and the fact that these big tech companies can actually regulate that? Well, I, know, I think it would be interesting if there were any actual evidence that they're suppressing conservatives, but there isn't. And I think before I would go, uh, if I was the president of the United States and I would go on Twitter <laughs> or on Facebook and say, wow, these are terrible companies. We need to do something about them. Uh, I think I'd want some actual evidence uh, rather than a bunch of complaining from uh, you know, you know, people on Twitter or social media who may have been also tweeting some like white supremacist thought. That's what I would think. But, but Jimmy, isn't that sort of striking at the heart of the matter, which is that there hasn't been a lot of transparency for these big tech companies? It hasn't always been clear how they're regulating their own platforms or if in the past they've even been regulating their own platforms. I mean, this is, this is part of the reason that there's so much regulatory scrutiny on them right now anyway. I mean, they have rules in place and they don't always adhere to their own rules. Now, now, that's where there's, like, something there. And I think that's actually a good point. Uh, there is a, obviously, there's a lot of criticism about what are the rules, how they're being implemented. So I certainly think a, a lot more transparency uh, and also, you know, giving, giving people some, some sort of way to challenge these decisions. I think that's great. Though, of course, the people who are complaining about this bias issue, I don't think they're going to be satisfied with transparency. Uh, they want an actual change in how these companies operate. Uh, and so, so this is a huge issue. You have, you have, you have senators, uh, Republican senators, wanting, wanting to change the law as a result of this. So I think it's sort of moved beyond just kind of like a Twitter issue or kind of a viral issue. There's something that actually may result in legislative changes. Jim, this isn't just a Republican issue, of course. It's bipartisan. It you have Elizabeth Warren on the other side calling for a breakup of big tech. So where do we go from here in the larger picture? And when is regulation going to happen? What does that look like? Now listen, you know, folks on the left tend to have a little different take on what the real issue is. They're looking at issues of election interference, corporate power. They think it's suppressing innovation. But listen, when you have a huge chunks of folks on the left and the right sort of agreeing that something would be done, I think you'd be crazy as an investor to assume nothing will ever be done, whether, whether it's, uh, I think, duplicating uh, Europe's uh, GDPR uh, privacy regulatory rule, something like that changing the Section 230 rule, which even some Democrats have talked about, because they want more moderation, uh, I think I would have to factor at least some sort of political risk when looking at these companies. Jimmy, uh, meantime, you've got this letter out from the Retail Industry Leaders Association uh, adding to what is now seem to be a growing list of, of lobbyists and, and different companies, both tech, retail, et cetera, that are coming out and sort of forming their antitrust cases against these big tech companies. How sharp are their teeth in terms of this case? Uh, you're going to find out just sort of how many enemies these companies have. But remember, the point of antitrust law is to sort of protect the economic and consumer welfare of consumers, not to protect competitors who can't compete. So you're right. They're going to be coming out of the woodwork. They're going to make a lot of cases. But it's going to be very, very difficult for them to prove under current antitrust doctrine, since obviously, and there was just a great Fed study out showing the massive amount of economic welfare that these companies are providing to consumers. It's going to be a very difficult case to make. Jimmy, how do you read the overall antitrust division of this administration? It, it feels like, you know, the president ran on deregulation. He implemented deregulation and then has moved to block a lot of important 
company mergers and consolidation. How should investors sort of view what this antitrust department looks like and, and the predictability of it? Listen, I, I think uh, I, I think the, the core doctrine, this core anti antitrust doctrine, particularly as it you know relates to these technology companies. I think that I think you have all these regulators. They still believe that they think that's the best way to run their business. Now they're going to now they're going to talk a lot of more, a lot more about antitrust and investigating these companies. And I'm sure there will be investigation. But I have yet to see really anyone saying that they've been getting it wrong for 30 years and we need to do something different. We need to go back to the way it was in the 1960s or we need to adopt some of these novel new theories that companies should be broken up purely because they're big or for some other reason. I, I still think we're sort of in that spot where what we've been doing for the past three decades, at least for a while, we're going to continue doing that.